Thank you very much. It's the National Football League presented by EA Sports. The scene from a few moments ago, this crowd enthusiastically cheering on their Texans as they emerge from the locker room. And we're just about ready for football as the Texans get set to match up with the Indianapolis Colts. Now a first carry for Lamar Miller. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. If you're the coaching staff upstairs, you might want to file that play away. Do you see how fast the safety closed on that one? Coming up and run support, made a big-time tackle. Might want to try and check into a pass next time. Yeah, got him for a loss. Really, really great play defensively. On second down, here's Watson. And incomplete. What's the old adage? Be quick, but don't hurry. Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be gotten rid of. Otherwise, he was going to get sacked. Three and out. A real danger here on their opening drive as they come up on a third and 12. A shotgun snap for Watson. Toward the sideline. Did he keep the feet in? Yes, he got them both down, says the side judge. And that's good enough for a first down. 16 yards on that one and also a Texan first down. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. A first down carry now for Miller. And that one goes for about six as he's taken down just shy of the 45. Well, I think that's what they're going to need to do here in the first half. You've got to take some pressure off of this young quarterback, and no better way to do it than to establish the running game early. Here's Watson now on second down. The catch made by DeAndre Hopkins. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. A really nice gain of 25 yards. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage. And that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, tight, sharply run route. Again, zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. And he'll fall forward to the 29-yard line. Tyquan Lewis makes the stop. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half, Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. On second down, here's Miller. Quick move by Miller. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 10 yards there, good enough for a Texan first down. Quite the opening drive march they're on right now. It looks a lot like what we saw in practice prior to the game, doesn't it? You know, because on that last big practice beforehand, you go through your offensive script. You go through your play calling. You go through all the stuff and establish things. And it looks like it's going like clockwork right now for them. From the red zone now, Watson over the middle. Open is Thomas. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. 11 more on that one and another first down. His passing has been on point on this drive, hasn't it? Been very accurate, gotten the ball downfield, gained nice chunks of yardage. But now, in this situation, the field is really condensed, partner. So if he's going to throw the football, that have to be pinpoint here. I was, was going to ask you about that. Field shrinks, has to be sharper, but it's been a good opening drive so far. Now they just want to see if they can cap it off with the bell ringer and put it in the end zone. They'll give it to him up the middle. That's going to go as a loss of four, and it'll be second down. Ah, uh, it's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that, got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. So they get pushed back to the 11, and here's second and goal. Back 22! Back 22! 
He'll get it up the middle. And he'll get this one down to about the 10 yard line. Only a couple yards there, and that's going to set up a long third and goal. Driven it down the field nicely here on the opening drive, but now it's put up or shut up. No doubt about it, because to make that type of a drive and ultimately kick a field goal would feel very disappointing. But I'm just wondering, is the head coach thinking, is this four down territory? Might he go for it? Now Watson on third and goal. That is caught at the seven yard line. And down inside the 10 here before he's out of bounds right around the seven. They're able to hold him to three there, and that leads to a fourth and goal. And he's already got two catches on the opening drive. <laughs> they know he's going to be a handful. And sometimes you game plan for that offensively. You want to make sure that guy touches the ball, and sometimes it just happens naturally. And then you change your game plan. When he has the hot hand, you keep going back to him because he's running routes with confidence as the game goes on. The kick by Fairbairn is good. And it's now 3-0, Texans. A dozen plays on that drive that ends with the field goal. Let's go ahead and break out some of the old chestnuts here, right, partner? Keep the ball in front, rally to it, and make the tackle. Right? No big plays given up. No balls over your head. Bend, don't break. Hold on, hold on. Chestnuts? Ah, uh, you like Come that on. one? What does that mean, break out the, just because you break chestnuts? I, I'm not sure about that, but I'm just going with why they said that. I have no idea. Fairbairn now following the made field goal. He'll send this one away. This is fielded at the chalk of the 10. And he breaks it all the way out to the 38-yard line. Great return. Well, Charles, the Indianapolis Colts, you remember this year they started 1-5. That was back on October 14th. That was their record. And then you look up after week 15, that 23 to nothing went over Dallas that you called. And they really have turned this season around. How have they done it? What they've done is they've stayed the course. You know, from the general manager to the head coach, Frank Reich, they had a plan in place. They understood what they were trying to accomplish. They waited for some guys to get healthy. And Andrew Luck's right arm got healthier and healthier. And that team really came together. They've now won seven out of their last eight after week 15. And if they get into the playoffs, they're a type of team that no one really wants to play. They'll run it here. This is Marlon Mack. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. And Brandon, as we continue to see, so much of the influence on this game is now coming from those hybrid-type players. In this case, strong safety, not worried about covering the pass. What a play on the run. Tackled for a loss. Yeah, forget the pregame introductions. Introduced himself with authority on that play. This is caught. It's Ryan Brand. And he's got this down to the 35. First catch for him. It's good for a dozen and a first down. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Luck on first down. Over the middle, it's caught by Rodgers. And he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. That throw good for four. It's second down. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Out of the gun, Luck, and it's incomplete. I think we'll see more of them trying to get him the football out of the backfield. They love what he can do in open space, and they believe that he creates mismatches they can exploit. The 25-yard line is what they need here. This is third down. Luck throwing again. It's complete to Graham. And he will have a first down at about the 21-yard line. What a methodical drive this is turning out to be. That time, nine yards, and the sticks move again. 
Nice job keeping that opening drive alive, and they're in plus territory, that part of the field where you really want to convert on third down. They did. Big time pickup for them, and now I think the aggressive play callers think to themselves, this part of the field, I take my shot at the end zone because the closer you get to the end zone, the field can, gets condensed. It makes it a lot tougher to run those routes. You still got a chance to actually run past people right now. Take your shot at the end zone early in the down and distance count. He makes a wonderful play there off the corner, protecting his side of the field. Oh, that reminds me of the great defenses of old, doesn't it? The Pittsburgh Steelers, Steel Curtain, they would not let you get on the field if you could only do one thing. You had to be a complete guy, and you had to be able to tackle. Now, I know I've said this before, but you know I wasn't alive when the Steel Curtain was played. <laughs> I know them, but I just want to let you know I wasn't alive. I'm going to keep peppering that in there, and one of these days, you're going to think that you were. <laughs> the tackle that time by Zach Cunningham. Well, they certainly had success throwing the ball on this drive and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play, stopped after a very short game. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally because otherwise, pass rushers just tee off on your quarterback and makes it very, very difficult for him in that situation. Throwing on third down, Luck. And that is incomplete. Boy, you will not see a quarterback of his caliber miss on one like that very often. I mean, there it is, wide open, got the shot, and he misfires. We talk about, boy, he'll want that one back all the time. <laughs> he definitely wants that one back. So with fourth down coming up, here's Adam Vinatieri now for the Colts field goal. From the left hash, this from 34. And Vinatieri's kick is good. Adam Vinatieri, he just keeps doing it. I mean, you look back to week eight, past Morton Anderson becoming the NFL's all-time leading scorer. What a career it has been for him. And not many kickers in the Hall of Fame, but Adam Vinatieri will join them in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. It's just a matter of when. And I'm wondering if he's accumulated enough to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. I would say so, because it's not just longevity that's gotten him this record. Think about the kicks that he's made. The kick against Oakland in the snow in the playoffs. How about the, the, the Super Bowl kick against the Rams when he's with the Patriots? How about with the Colts getting it done there and winning another Super Bowl? He's made so many big kicks that we can remember. He's one of those guys that I believe we should talk about being a first ballot Hall of Famer. Well, Charles, you think about the Houston Texans and the turnaround that they've had this year. Double digit. Uh -oh. uh -oh. okay. I have to have to jump in. Oh, here. because you projected to... this. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Do we remember preseason? Was there something that was said in preseason? You want to clear the Houston your Texans? You want to clear your throat one more time? Let me clear my throat. Uh -oh. oh, sorry. What so, are you saying now? Anyway. I wanted to talk about their season and their turnaround. Double-digit wins, and they're in the mix for a first-round bye. And just the way that they've played, I mean, let's remember, 0-3 start. Deshaun Watson said, hey, I don't know how much room there will be on the bandwagon when we get rolling. Well, apparently there's a lot of room on the bandwagon <laughs> because they won nine straight, took a loss, and then get back on the beam with a win against the Jets in Week 15. But this is a dangerous team with Deshaun Watson at quarterback, DeAndre Hopkins at wide receiver. They can run the ball with Lamar Miller. And that defense, they come for you, don't they? Led by J.J. Watt. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. Ten yards there, good enough for a Texan first down. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. And if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Hey, 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 hey. They keep it with Miller on first down. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, second down. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, and that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends, they're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold him to no gain. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. They get 14 on that one. Good for a Houston first down. Getting the sense, Charles, they're going to put a big emphasis this afternoon on the run game. And why not? What we're seeing so far, it's working pretty well from them. And here's the best part. We always talk about the best performers do their job when the lights come on. I think he likes natural light best. Watson going to give this one to Miller. 
And he's going to take this one across midfield and into Colts territory. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Well, we saw him there trying to get it to the outside, trying to get to the perimeter, but not a whole lot of room there. But there's got to be one positive to that. If you keep moving laterally, creases tend to develop as the game moves on, and they can run it back inside later. Four down, four down. Ten. Green. This is the running back, Blue. And he'll be taken down as that will take us to the end of the first quarter of play. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and it's Texans football as we get going in quarter number two. And they're driving, but they come up on a third and short here. They'll try to run for it with Miller. And some good tackling there as he stopped up at about the 41. Give him a yard on the play, and he's definitely short. It'll be fourth down and a few inches. He may be a bit undersized compared to the modern-day NFL defensive tackle, but what he lacks in size, he definitely makes up for it in his ability to make tackles in the run game as well. And this is off target to the left. Didn't get there anyway. It's no good, and this game will remain tied here in quarter number two. Everything looked good. Good snap, good hold. Sometimes, though, the ball just doesn't want to go where you want it. And this one winds up no good. Two sides to every coin. This is the bad side of missing the 58-yarder. Now they start at the 48. On first down, it's long. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back. Complete. And this time, he's able to take it down to the 42. 10 yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him? without weakening our overall defense. You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. We all have habits. We can be somewhat predictable, and you know me pretty well on second down and short. What I like to say. Play action. Yeah, without a doubt, I thought that was a great spot to call it. Instead, didn't go their way, did it? No, defense sold out for the run. Worked out well. He didn't seem in a rush. I guess they just didn't know where the play clock was. I think you're right about that because there was no hurried movements there, right? No up-tempo at all. Clock just ran out. I think he was as surprised as maybe his bench was. Bad time to get a delay of game penalty there. Not that there's a good time, but that makes it third and six. From the gun, here's Love. Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Andre Howe. The 20. And they will finally get to him, but a great return has set him up. First and goal at the five. He had his eyes on the end zone. He got close. At least he set the offense up nicely, but he's probably mad he didn't take that one to pay dirt. I agree with you, and you know he's going to get teased because he didn't get it all the way into the end zone. But if they don't score now, if they don't get a touchdown, he won't just get teased. They'll be glaring at him. How'd you not score? A line of scrimmage once again, the five, as they get ready for second and goal. They'll give it to him up the middle. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. It'll go as a loss of a yard, and it'll set up third down. Not only was that a terrific play, but that loss of yardage they created this close to their own goal line, that gives them a little breathing room now as they move them back. And they're breathing fire a little bit right now, aren't they? A lot of confidence being shown by them at this point in the game. Watson going to throw on third and goal. And he is caught. Hopkins for the Texans touchdown. DeAndre Hopkins from six yards away. And the Texans are in for six. On those slants, everything happens so quickly. What makes it work? 
the timing between the passer and the receiver. In this case, a slant route. Ordinarily, it's probably about three steps before you go on the slant. In this amount of time, I think it's a two-step deal. Boom, put his foot in the ground and got inside for the pass. Got inside for the pass, got inside for the catch and the score. Bear now to kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. That throw good for four. It's second down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. On second down, here's Long. And he hits his tight end, Ebron. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. Only three yards on the catch, it's third down. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. The Colts on third down, just one for three thus far. Here it's third and three. Just beating the play clock is locked. Brought in over the middle by Grant. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. It's complete here to T.Y. Hilton. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed. Because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. Again, Luck to the right side to Eric Ebron. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. And a nice gain of 21 yards. His position, and he's listed as a tight end, but he certainly doesn't run like one. And that's what we're seeing more and more coming into the league. Those guys who can run, make plays after the catch, and gain that additional yardage. And using that speed there to turn it into a pretty nice little game. They'll run with Mac. And he showed off the athletic juke. Good little gain there. Not a whole lot of real estate, but a nice carry. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. Here's Mack on the toss, and he'll be brought down at the 21, just shy of the 20 in the red zone. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Go, 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 go. 
They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. They'll try the air now with Locke. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. The beauty of being able to play a zone defense when you can sit back and see the ball coming out of the quarterback's hands, guess what? Creates a lot of confusion. Kind of a muddle in the middle of the field where you go make a play on the football. The Colts on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This will be third and five. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. It's a five-yard pickup, but spotted a few chain links short of the first, so a little bit of decision time here coming up on fourth down. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. And Vinatieri's kick is good. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. So the field goal there caps what winds up to be an 11-play drive. Well, partner, that's a lot of offense to run there to only get three points. So I just wonder, are they going to recycle those plays because they were successful in getting three? Or do you go to another section of the playbook trying to find ones that get you into the end zone and get you six? The lead cut to just four as they kick it away and turn things over to their D. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. And now out comes Houston. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. Watson will bring up the Texans here first and 10 at their own 24. They'll start out on the ground. It's Lamar Miller. Takes this to the 27. Give him four yards. I think you mentioned in the opening drive that these guys needed to establish the run, protect the young QB. I actually broke that down, believe it or not. So how would you assess things so far? I'm kind of touched that you actually wrote something like that down. <laughs> I appreciate that, partner. But I do think they've been able to do that. Maybe not as effectively as they've wanted to, but I think we'll see more of as this game goes along because they want to continue to take care of that young QB. Hey, oh, hey. To throw on second is Watson. Griffin's got it, middle of the field. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. First catch for him. It's good for a dozen and a first down. Like so many tight ends nowadays, they have no problem at all putting him in the slot and letting him go to work. And that's a nice pitch and catch right there for a first down. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. They go play action here on first down. The Colts are going to get him. Down he goes. And plays like that really hurt play calling. They had a really nice gain on the previous play, but gave about half the yardage back on the sack. Excellent pressure up front. Nowhere to go with the football. Down he goes. Don't need it all back at once, but you figure they're going to need something here. 17 yards to go on second down. Watson hands to Miller on the draw. And they won't fare much better here as he maybe gets back to the line. There to stop him was Darius Leonard. I know that speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. The Texans on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and 17. From the gun, here's Watson. And an alley to run. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. Give him 14 on the play. And that'll bring up fourth down.
The Texans send the punter out. Chester Rogers deep for Indianapolis. The Texans send the punter out. Back deep, Chester Rogers. And that'll hit in the end zone. Much too much leg there. That'll be a touchback. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. And that one falls incomplete. Try to dump it underneath. Now second down. Well, partner, like we always do this time of year with the holidays here and me happy for once, <laughs> I want to say happy holidays to you, to your family, and to everybody out there in Madland. I like how you said that. Before I do go on, though, happy holidays to you, your family, and Thank everyone you. out there in Madland as well. And hope that they're safe and they're happy and successful holidays for all. But as you said, happy for once. Usually you're kind of, a, kind of a Grinch this time of year. What's going on? Yeah, well, my heart grew three sizes this morning. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Gotta get you some new clothes to accommodate that big chest. <laughs> but enjoy the holidays, everyone. Eat, be merry, enjoy your family time. Now a play fake here on first down. Looking sideline incomplete. Ryan Grant, the intended target, and it's second down. It's been my observation. There's been a nice variety of play calling defensively. You and I often talk about an offense's ability to keep a defense off balance with what they're doing. I think the converse has been true in this game. Yeah, I think you're right. They seem to have gone off tendency quite a bit, but only the second quarter, a lot of time to change things. Yeah. On second and 10, Locke. His throw incomplete. Feels like they're getting caught in between here because they didn't completions on first and second down. Now you gotta worry a little bit about the clock because you prefer not to give them another shot here in the first half. If you don't pick up the first down, guess what? You're likely going to have to. The Colts on third down, two for five to this point. This is third and ten. Check out. Five, nine, Check out. Throwing again is Locke. And now another one thrown incomplete. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? The zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. Out is Rigoberto Sanchez on fourth down to punt this thing. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. The Texans offense now, they get set to head back on the field here. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. Hey, blue 80. Blue 80. Hey. On first down, Watson got his man complete over the middle. It's Griffin. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. Now the Texans will burn the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Down, flat 22. Watson on first down. Over the middle complete. That's Griffin. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half.
Watson now hitting on 80% of his passes in the early going. 8 of 10. It's first down. Play action for Miller. Now Watson. Wide open receiver complete. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. A very solid gain of 27. QT Charles, he didn't make his debut this year until week four. Busted out with 11 catches in that win over Indianapolis. And now you got Will Fuller done for the year with a knee injury. He's a big part of this offense. He certainly is because he's quickly going to have to become one of those go-to guys for Deshaun Watson and a guy that he can get the ball to pretty fast because Will Fuller provided a lot of speed and flash and could work inside and outside. QT's going to work out of the slot mainly, get it to him, and let him go. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. Back to the air, Watson on second down. And that is incomplete. 16 seconds now on the clock. This drive, which was going so smoothly, all of a sudden it's a little bit of a roadblock here with two straight incompletions. Yeah, apparently this defense has had enough. Apparently they're saying no more. We're speaking a stand right here, right now. But it is third and ten. They've got to get after him one more time. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Hey! To the air yet again, Watson. And that'll be incomplete with 11 seconds remaining now. So they won't get a touchdown, but here's a chance to at least get three to end the first half. From the left hash, it's a 36-yard attempt. This one through. And that'll open the lead up to a touchdown now at 13 to 6. So the drive stalls out inside the 15 yard line, but they do get three. And I've talked with enough players nowadays that when they have these types of kicks, that no one says to their guy, hey, that's just like making an extra point piece of cake. Because the extra point is not a piece of cake anymore. <laughs> but kicking a field goal from that distance, just give him confidence and let him knock it through. Fairbairn now following the made field goal. He'll send this one away. This one fielded at the five. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. The Colts offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. And from this spot in the field with the clock where it's at, you think we're just going to see a knee and that's it? And I think in this situation, that's the proper play. But we do know there's some risk takers out there that may want to take one more shot before the clock runs out. Likely time for one final snap as they start out first and 10. And with time running short here, they'll simply take a knee, and that should do it for half number one. So we've come upon halftime here in Houston, and it's the home team, the Texans, leading this one. As we'll get you over to Orlando, where standing by is Jonathan Coachman. He has our EA Sports halftime report. This will be taken in at the 1. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Out come the Colts. They'll have it first here to start quarter number three. They're down here, but very much in this game. What's the tonality of a coach's talk? when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission. Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe works. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves them with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. Here's Luck now on second down. Incomplete. If you're a defender, one of the fun things about playing zone defenses, especially in today's football, 
is that it's not as static as it was in the good old days, meaning you just dropped to a point and reacted to the football. Now you end up with a lot of man-to-man -man principles once you get into your zone defense. In other words, get to your assignment and then locate a guy coming into your area, and then you end up covering him almost man for man. That allows him to make more plays on the football like the one we just saw there. Now on third down, that pass knocked down in the backfield and incomplete. And we're into the second half now, and this is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he'll punt it away for the second time. <laughs> 47 yards on the punt that time, just one yard on the return. And the Texans will take over with a first and ten. So here's the Texans offense now. They get set to start this third quarter. They were able to get the ball back here, didn't surrender any points. Now they'll look to add to that lead. Yeah, how about the boost the defense gave them? Going right out on the field, shutting them down, not giving up any points, and turning the ball back over. They want to do their part now and show them a little respect and some gratitude <laughs> by scoring some points. And to get a little more cushion. And he'll be brought down by the Colts. Jabal Sheard able to get in there and drop him for a two-yard loss. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Sack. Quarterback gets hit. <laughs> now, following the sack, they'll come up here on a second down and 12. Out of the gun, Watson. Hopkins on the grab over the middle. And he'll go down just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes and they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air. And sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defender. In a heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked off around the 37. And he'll bring this one back to the 29. Offensively, when you see cover two, the thought has to go through the quarterback's head. Drive the football when making throws. It's not just the deep guys covering. It's the guys underneath you have to be careful of. Drive your throw. Otherwise, you... And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Eric Ebron, 29 yards. And the Colts are an extra point away from tying up this football game. Now Adam Vinatieri for the point after. A little surprising they wouldn't go for two, but this is up and good, and that will tie things up at 13. So we're right back where we started. All even as the kick's away. This is taken at his four. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. And now out comes Houston. Watson will bring up the Texans here, first and 10, just shy of the 30. Try to shake off the interception, he'll look to throw. He's gonna float this one deep right side. And incomplete there, almost picked off. That's one you maybe expect your roaming free safety to come up with, but it's second down. Well, I guess we just discovered that someone is certainly not going to sit back and just take it in this game, huh? No, they were trying to get that touchdown back in one shot. One shot, trying to help out his defense and let the other team know they were coming after him. Down. Green, down. On second and ten, Watson. And this will be incomplete. 
Let's face it, you can run the route tree as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. Back 22! Back 22! The pressure drops off as they'll look to throw. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And able to rip off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped inside the 40. A very nice pickup of 33 yards. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. On first and 10, Watson. That's caught by his tight end, Jordan Akins. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. Watson now six for six since coming back out of the locker room. It's first and 10. Watson just beating the play clock. Oh, the ball is out. Watson lost it. On plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. Now a handoff to Miller. And he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. That one good for 12 yards. And just like that, it's third down. It seemed like the situation was second and a mile to go for a first down, but screams what? Throw the football. You got to pass in order to try to pick up that kind of yardage. But in this case, they ran a tendency breaker because the tendency is for defenses to be out there and be set up for a pass. So you break tendency and actually run the football. That changes everything because if you're able to find a crease, you often have bigger guys working against smaller guys downfield. They picked up excellent yardage there to bring up a third down. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. What I love about watching the passing game nowadays is that the one-dimensional receiver is really starting to leave the game. You've got to be able to do it all. Of course, you've got to run fast. Of course, you've got to catch the ball. But route running savvy and toughness is a premium for all of that now. They just do get the playoff as he'll look to throw. And it's caught. So he got three of one tackle, but couldn't do a whole lot else. Three yards is the gain that time. Second and goal. Well, there wasn't much there with that hitch route. They didn't gain what they expected. But sometimes when you call a hitch, you really don't have an alternate to go to. You don't have a second route to throw it to. So sometimes you have to rifle in there and hope for the best. One man in the backfield. That's Miller. Second and goal. They'll try to punch it in with Miller. And the D not yielding much there. He's only going to get a yard to about the two. This is kind of one of those in-between plays here, Charles, on third and goal from the two or the three in that area. What do you dial up? Something quick hitting. You don't have the time for something that develops slowly. It's got to be right at them if you're going to run the football. And if you're going to throw it, something quick, get it out of your hands in a hurry. Now Watson on third and goal, and this is going to be incomplete. They converted twice on third down that drive already, but couldn't make it a third. We always talk about in-game adjustments. How about what the defense did there, able to shut them down on that attempt? Kaimi Fairbear now to attempt the Texan field goal. From the left hash, he'll have to cut this at a tight angle. The kick by Fairbairn is good. And that will break our tie and give him a three-point lead. Because his third field goal now in the ball game, and they've needed his leg. This last one gives him the lead. It's been a back-and-forth kind of a game, hasn't it? Now you got to tell your defense, guys, need you to make this stand up because we got the momentum going in the right direction. But we need you to make sure we carry it home.
Fairbairn now following the made field goal. He'll send this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. Here comes the Colts offense now as they make their way onto the field. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Now a first down throw, Lock. Wide open, receiver complete. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That play going for 16 yards to start the drive, first down. If you're going to blitz, likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him even if he has an elite defender on him because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. Caught left side by Hilton. Another good reception there. The Colts on the march. I like watching the wide receiver screen because it's a real teamwork play because guess what? The guy catching the ball, he'll get all the credit, but how about the people have to block in front of him, either fellow receivers or offensive linemen? That makes that play a really nice timing play, and sometimes it can break big. Luck now. Five straight completions here in this second half. First and ten. Now a carry for Mack. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. It's Kareem Jackson making the play defensively. What's the old expression, three yards in a cloud of dust? In this case, it's dust-covered pellets. It's no longer that old grass that we used to play on right and chew it up. Now, we've got that artificial surface. You see the pellets go up. Still a nice play by the defense. They keep it on the ground, Mack again. And the play goes nowhere. Losing yardage back near the 40 at the 39. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result, negative yardage. Throwing on third down, Lock. And that is incomplete. I would put just a little bit too much heat on that one. When you throw it to the outside, you do have to be careful because you got to keep it away from the defender. But you also have to give your own guy a chance, too. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he's on to punt for Indianapolis. And that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. And now out comes Houston. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point kicker. Exactly. You put it through the post. That's going to help him in contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him in contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. So bad. I don't know. Under pressure now, Watson and down. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. Miller will get it. He has been busy today. And he'll take this one only up to about his 13-yard line. And they only get a yard back there. They'll be left with a third down and long. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. And what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. Off of play action, it's Watson. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. Anytime a defense can sit back in a zone like that, 
it tends to create a lot of congestion in the middle of the field. Makes it very hard to slot one in. Looked like I-4 at rush hour in your hometown of Orlando, Florida. An absolute mess. The Texans send the punter out. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. This is fielded at the 27. A big boot that time. 57 yards, the official distance. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and 10. Now the Colts offense gets ready to head back on the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. They begin the drive on the ground with Mack. And he stopped immediately there. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe they'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. They'll run it here with Wilkins, and the hole closes quickly. He gets it across the 35 to the 36-yard line. Only a gain of a couple there. That leaves them needing about seven here on third down. Sometimes your philosophies get challenged at times you don't want them to. They did try to stick to the running game on the first two plays. Didn't amount to much. And now facing a third and long at the outset of this drive. From the gun on third down, Locke. And he connects with Ebron. And they've got it well across midfield, down to the 40 before it's all said and done. And they're able to convert on third with a solid gain of 23. They really love to get him into one-on-one -on -one opportunities, and this is one way, work him out of the slot and create a mismatch. Who's going to cover him? Corner, safety, linebacker? He's got a way to beat all of those positions. Now Mack. And an alley to run. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop him. A big hitter there. A first down gain of 26 yards. Every player I know tends to play the game in his mind before it actually happens. There is no way he thought that at this stage of the game, this would be his first big run like that. Yeah, but it's got to feel for him like the floodgates open a sigh of relief. Now we'll see if things can open up for him. See if it can continue. This is Wilkins. They stopped after only a yard, taking it down to the 14. Well, they had that one sniffed out. Excellent run blitz. Stopped that one for a short gain. What makes a good run blitz a good run blitz? The ability to stay on task, to follow up your assignment, go to the gap you're supposed to cover, and not be deterred by anything else. They'll run it now out of the gun. Spit, and he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Naeem Hines taking it in from 14 yards out. And the Colts have taken the lead here in the fourth. And there you go. Nothing really too complex. Block, keep to your assignments. Let them run it in. They did it. Fundamental football. Good blocking. Beats good tackling on that play. And result, touchdown. Finitary able to tack on the PAT. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Out comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Griffin, and he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. 
That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. On second down, here's Watson. Over the middle, that's caught by QT. He's now just three yards shy of 197 yards receiving on the contest and a first down. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to it? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. Now a first down throw, Watson dumps it complete to Miller. And the play goes nowhere, losing yardage back near the 40 at the 39. This will be a two-yard loss on the play, and it'll be second and 12. Again, it's Watson. And Miller with it over the middle. And able to rip off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped inside the 40. A good pick up there of 22. You know I'm going to lean towards the defender, right? You know I'm going to do that. I know. That's a tough situation for him as I see it. But the truth of the matter is, that ball was not streaking towards him. Had a little arc on it. He's got to find a way to get his head around to make a play on the football. Now a play fake here on first down. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. It's a gain of six on the play, and it's a second down. Throw on second is Watson. And his throw here is incomplete. Thomas the intended target, and it's third and four. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open, and this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. From the gun, here's Watson. This time for Smith, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 25, and he will return this one to the 30-yard line. All right, Brandon, normally when you hear about guys making two interceptions in the game, you're thinking, must be a free safety, maybe a corner. How about getting two picks out of one of your linebackers? Again, he's just in the right place at the right time. That's another great play to come away with the football. Now the first play of the drive there is incomplete. But not to get too overcritical there because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you're being overly critical there. You're just analyzing it. And he gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. Ball on the 30 as they come up second and 10. On second and 10, Locke. Ebron with it over the middle. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. The reception good for seven. It's third down. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. A second down completion got him seven. Now here's third and three. Now it's Locke off the bootleg. Looking left side, and he's got a man. It's Wilkins. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. They call it a gain of 19, and it moves the chains. Couldn't just sit on it here, could they? Had to throw the ball on third down. Got the big completion in the pickup. Fresh set of downs now. They've got to feel great. And defensively, a backbreaker. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 44-yard line. Again, Luck. On the right side, it's Hilton with a catch. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. A gain of six there on first. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, 
you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him, I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. And he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. Luck able to find Hilton there for a Colt first down. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. So first and 10 now from the 30. Luck on first down. Over the middle, it's caught by Rodgers. And he's taken down, but not before reaching the 10-yard line. A good pick up there of 20 yards. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down. Stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. So first and goal, six points here would go a long way toward wrapping this one up. They'll fake it. Now Locke. And that incompletion breaks a string of five straight connections. And it's second down. I'm going to need some help with this one. How did he miss it? Wide open in the end zone. He's not hurried. He's not hit. And somehow, incomplete? Yeah, what happened? During film study, that's one where he's just going to shake his head, not be able to believe it. Six points go by the wayside on that one. He'll get it up the middle. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. It's a loss of two, now third down. And this is why the head coach gets paid the big bucks. Look at where they are in this situation, partner. Do you throw the ball here in a long-distance situation? Do you run it again and trust your defense and make sure you take care of the ball and punt it away? What kind of options do you have here, and what do you trust more on your team? Yeah, they may have just pushed him back into that throwing situation. We'll see. To the sideline, and wow, what a catch there. He doesn't get a lot, but he was able to get the feet down complete. They're able to hold him to three there, and that leads to a fourth and goal. Was that a receiver? <laughs> yeah, actually it was. It was a running back who was a receiver on the play. Ike's been spending time in the receiver drills getting his feet down. Well, those guys out of the backfield, they got to be good, agile with their feet. He showed the agility there with a toe tap. No doubt about it. It's like he'd run to ballet school. Got the toes down and stayed in bounds. Now, from a defensive perspective, though, I think maybe they're saying, hey, we did what we needed to do, kept this a one-score game. Yeah, without a doubt, because they were able to bleed some time off the clock, right? Put themselves in a good position, but it's not out of reach yet, okay? Being able to hold them to a field goal means that they do have a chance to come back and win this game. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And now out comes Houston. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. And of course, they'd like to forget the inning, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive to get him down the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, the only thing that matters is part two, right? Because once they threw the interception and finished off the drive, that does them no good to go back and say, well, you know, we had a good one going. Finish things off. That's the only way you can get it done. Try to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. Sometimes the coverage is so good, no matter what you're doing on offense, you just can't shake anyone free. They try their best to find someone open, but they took away every passing alley, every angle, and shut the play down. Line of scrimmage, again the 25, second and 10. Throwing again is Watson, over the middle complete. It's Carter. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Came up a little short on the last pass play. They did get nine yards out of it, leaving him with his third and one. Here's a give to Miller, and he'll get this only up to about the 35.
the Texans send the punter out as he's on here to punt it away. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. This is taken at the 18. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And possession will switch hands first and 10. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. They're holding on right now to that slim advantage in a one-score game. And you hear a lot about two-minute offense and four-minute offense. Obviously, the four-minute offense applies here. How do they run that effectively? Yeah, really what the four-minute offense is is you're just trying to grind the clock. So you want consistent gains, steady gains. Doesn't have to be big plays, but it has to be plays that gets first down. Now the ball comes loose. Give him three on the keeper there, and it is second down. Wow, that ball gets knocked free, but a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like, it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. Under four to go now as the clock runs and they come up on second down. On the carry, it's Wilkins. It's a five-yard gain, but they'll still be a yard short here with third down now looming. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. Here we go. Third and one. Gut check time on both sides. They run again with Wilkins. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive going. Brandon, they're still in the lead, but momentum's certainly been going the opposite direction. So to me, that's a really important pickup there on third down. Try and regain some confidence, and you're right. They need to stem the tide a little bit. That certainly helped. to take it all the way down and just take the delay. That's going to set them back five yards. So a little bit of a stiffer challenge now. First and 15 following the delay of game. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he takes this up right near the 45-yard line. A good comeback there after the penalty. Nine yards, and it's second and six. Here's Mack. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. So fresh out of the two-minute warning, and here's another timeout taken with 1.55 remaining. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And they go backwards here, losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. Whistles now in a timeout. So defensively, they burn it here with 1.51 left.
You'd have to think likely another running play coming here, second and 11. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. That hold coming from the middle of the line, the center. And it's difficult for him because sometimes you've got people right over you, and as soon as you snap it, trying to get your hands up and block them, you can be a little bit late getting it done. They'll come up now on a second and long after the hold. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll push this forward only to about the 42-yard line. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. As he'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. Just a one-yard pick up there, and it'll be fourth down. Well, with the fumble he had earlier, we, we know how key keeping the football is here. That fumble earlier probably at the forefront of his mind. Just hold on to this thing. It's also at the forefront of the mind of the guys who are trying to get the ball from him. And since they've seen him drop it on the ground before, they're doing everything possible to have him do it again. They need that turnover. Now the Texans offense, they head back out to do battle here. They're down here in a one-score game. But the time, it's a factor, but it's not a huge factor right now, is it? It's really not because this amount of time gives them a chance to run their offense, to go through play sequences. And this is what they work on every week in practice, usually on a Friday. They go over this type of a situation, late game situation. What are we going to do when we have the opportunity? They've called these plays a bunch of times. Now's their chance to execute them. Yeah, they have the opportunity now. Here's the execution. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. They'll try again from the 20 on second and 10. He's back to throw. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. So back-to-back -back incompletions, now third and ten. And first things first, before you think about marching the ball down the field, you got to move the chains. You're exactly right. Got to get back into focus here. Get the first down. That's what's vital to them. Back to throw. And he comes back with one complete. And he's able to get up here to the 26. Six yards on the pickup. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. He'll look to throw. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And that is incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And it would appear the Colts are going to win the football game. And he'll have a tough time living that one down. It's one thing, Charles, to drop a pass. It's quite another to drop it on fourth down. And so many teams work on that in terms of locking in on those key downs. You know, I've seen, you know, you and I have both been to practices where we've seen, hey, third down situation, big third down alert, lock in here, fourth down play, make sure you focus just a little bit extra. It didn't pay off in that situation. Partner, they took a knee to finish this one off. To me, that's the only thing they lost in the fourth quarter. How about that comeback? Yeah, trailed coming into the last frame. Got it done, taking the knee. A road win in the National Football League. Charles, you never take that for granted, no matter who you're playing, no matter where you're playing. You take it and you run with it. <laughs> and you know you primed the pump all week in your own home facility. 
no one thinks we can do this. Only people who believe are right here in this room. And then you go on the road, band together, and get it done. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. So long from Houston.